Be inspired, supported, and empowered. This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network. We talked a lot about COVID this year and also other infectious diseases such as MPOX, polio. We talked about how the mRNA technology helps bring about new treatments for care. We talked about vaccine hesitancy and how it is affecting this pandemic as well as winter flu season and how we've said many, many times throughout 2022, it's too soon to be totally over with COVID. Welcome to The Health Advocates, a podcast that breaks down major health news of the week to help you make sense of it all. I'm Stephen Newmark, Director of Policy at the Global Healthy Living Foundation. And I'm Zoe Rothblatt, Associate Director of Community Outreach at GHLF. Our goal is to help you understand what's happening in the healthcare world to help you make informed decisions to live your best life. But before we get started, we want to be sure that everyone takes a listen to all of GHLF's great podcasts. We have so many to choose from. We sure do. As a reminder to our listeners, you can check all of our podcasts out at ghlf.org slash listen. This week, we'll give a shout out to Talking Head Pain, hosted by Joe Co. If you live with headaches and migraine or know someone who does, this podcast covers a wide range of experiences when it comes to living with this neurological disorder. Definitely. It's a great show and I definitely recommend it. Okay, let's start with a listener comment. Ready? I'm ready. This one is from Nathan P. who wrote, thanks for putting on such a great podcast. Well, thank you, Nathan, for listening to such a great podcast. Yeah, thanks, Nathan. Today, we'll be talking about all the advancements in advocacy and policy we saw in 2022 and some top pieces of news from the year. This is our last episode of the year, kind of bittersweet. So sad. Um, You know, we'll be back in the new year to keep providing content to you all. And I just want to say we're so grateful to all of our listeners. Absolutely. 2020 sucked. 2021 sort of sucked. 2022, big improvement. (laughs) Well, speaking about improvement, we had seven bills around the states passed that we advocated for. Yes. That's pretty big, especially in an election year. Absolutely. We had four copay accumulator bills in New York, Washington, Delaware, and Maine that passed. Why don't you explain what these bills do, actually? Yeah, so briefly explain, you know, we can go on and on about these bills, but just, you know, a quick one sentence if, you know, you want to tell your friends and family what's going on. So these bills give protection so that any payment made on your behalf for a medication, like let's say use a copay card to pay for your copay, that money will count towards your deductible. We also had a nice non-medical switching bill that passed in New York. Why don't you explain what that means, Zoe? So this law will prohibit health insurance from switching stable patients off their current medications to another medication. You know, the scenario would be you're just going about taking your medication, refilling it as usual, and all of a sudden one day in the middle of the plan year, you get a notice saying, hey, we actually think you should take this medication instead. You're obviously upset because you're doing well. You want to take what your doctor prescribed and you're worried that the other one won't be effective. So this law ultimately stops that process. Great. We all also had two step therapy bills that passed in California and Massachusetts. Why don't you explain what those do, Zoe? Uh, I could have bet on that question. So great news about the two step therapy bills, especially in California, because California actually had a step therapy bill passed a long time ago. So this helped bring in some of the newer protections that advocates have been fighting for. So it strengthened the old bill. So step therapy bills, what it does is it provides protections against the insurance practice of requiring you to try and fail on a different medication before you could have the one originally prescribed. So basically your doctor says, I want you to take X medication. Insurance says, no, you have to take Y and prove that it's not effective before you could take X. And this law provides an exemptions process. So you don't have to do that. Excellent work. We also got a few protections for surprise billing. Oh yeah, this happened in the new year. I almost forgot about that. If you go back way back when to episode two of season three from our show, we discuss that surprise billing is now illegal under the No Surprises Act. And surprise billing is literally what the name suggests. It's just an unexpected bill, but it's usually for a substantial amount of money because like you accidentally got care from a provider out of network and the insurance company doesn't cover services from that provider. Like I've heard stories about, oh, the anesthesiologist wasn't in the plan and I got this huge 
huge bills. So this gives protections against that happening. Yeah. So some great pieces of legislation around the country. And I would say a big thank you to our patients who helped us get these pieces of legislation passed. Yeah, we cannot do this without patient stories. Legislators can look at numbers in the bill all day, but hearing the voice from the person impacted ultimately really helps sway legislators to have these discussions with their peers and get stuff passed. Absolutely. Some other highlights of 2022. We talked a lot about COVID this year and also other infectious diseases such as MPOX, polio. We talked about the idea of getting free tests from the government and now the elimination of those free tests, what it means to live during an endemic and a pandemic, how the mRNA technology helps bring about new treatments for care. We talked about vaccine hesitancy and how it is affecting this pandemic as well as winter flu season and how we've said many, many times throughout 2022, it's too soon to be totally over with COVID. Agreed. You know, it's interesting when you parse out these different topics we've discussed because COVID can often become a blur and feel like we're having the same conversation over and over again. But what stood out to me there, you just talked about the mRNA technology that is huge, that that can help, you know, bring about new treatments for patients. Also free tests. I hope maybe that program gets mimicked in other health areas. I think there's a lot to learn from what's been going on. Yeah, absolutely. We also uh, met with many patient advocates on the air. I had some great discussions. I'm not going to go through all of them. I will just give a quick shout out. Oh gosh, too many to name, but I thought it was really exciting to talk to Kelly Cusack, who uses her background and interest in fashion to be a disability advocate. I found that to be a great conversation. Any conversations that stuck out for you in 2022? Yeah. You know, what really stands out was over the summer, we talked a lot about methotrexate access when patients around the country were having trouble getting their prescriptions filled or ultimately just worried about losing access to their medication. And we spoke to one of my friends, Cheryl Crow, arthritis life Cheryl. Mm -hmm. She's an occupational therapist and rheumatoid arthritis patient. And she was following closely what was happening on social media. So it was cool to hear from her. And we also spoke to Dr. Donald Miller, who is a pharmacist. And we got to hear from his perspective about this access issue and what role pharmacists play in helping patients get at medications. Yeah, that was fascinating. We also had the um, good fortune to attend and report back on many conferences as well as advocacy days that we participated in. So yeah, what's like one takeaway from each of these? Yeah, so I had the good fortune of being able to attend the ULAR conference. That's the European League Against Rheumatology uh, conference. And one takeaway from that was that chronic pain was being called its own disease. Oh, yeah, that was really cool and so important. You know, so many people live with chronic pain and undiagnosed chronic pain. So to hear it being recognized as its own could really lead to some advancements. Yeah. You know, the next one, which just happened recently, ACR, the American College of Rheumatology, I attended both as GHLF staff, but also as a patient presenter. And my main takeaway is just how important it is to insert the patient voice into these conversations that are just outside the doctor's office and give doctors and patients the ability to communicate with each other. Yeah. And we also did a bunch of advocacy days uh, virtually. And I think that the main takeaway from those various advocacy days around the states and in Washington, D.C., is that advocacy can happen over Zoom and be effective. So it was great that we were able to do that this year. Totally agreed. And I've been a part of a few Zoom meetings. And whether you're with a legislator or their staff, I really feel like you do have that one-on-one -on -one time with them. Sometimes in person, it can be a little chaotic and hard to feel that closeness. But I've actually really felt it translated well on Zoom. And then the other thing I'd say is from the advocacy days, we've learned that we really need more representation and advocacy. Mm -hmm. um, it's often the same group of people showing up and we need more diverse voices. And, you know, we're definitely trying to you know, find those diverse voices and help them come along because it's really important to hear the stories of people. So true. So true. So we did a lot in 2022. We've had some good successes. And um, of course, there's still more to do. So let's give a little preview of what's on the horizon in 2023. Well, the COVID emergency is expected to renew. So I'm sure we'll keep talking about it. And, you know, regardless of its emergency status, so long as it's affecting our community who lives with chronic disease, we'll definitely keep talking about it. 
Yeah, and we'll continue to advocate, of course, to get more bills passed and ensure patients have access to care and medications without obstacles. So key and just so frustrating that year after year, this has to be a priority. Like, I wish we could just get it all done and patients could have access and we could live in a perfect world. But alas, here we are, keep advocating. But, you know, ultimately also more coverage of our conferences and advocacy days and, of course, bringing along wonderful guests. Yeah, well, before we close, I just want to say to you, Zoe, how great it's been to do this podcast week after week with you. It's been a real pleasure in 2022. I'm looking forward to continuing in 2023. And I hope that you'll have some restful time as we get to the end of this year and celebrate the holidays with your family. And to all of our listeners, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, whatever it is that you celebrate, Happy New Year. Uh, If you celebrate nothing else, at least celebrate yourself. That's a great message. Thank you so much, Stephen. I've enjoyed doing this with you as well. And I'm just so grateful for our listeners that, you know, they're here tuning into us and we're able to have this time and and put a show on for everyone. And yes, happy celebrations, everyone. We hope you have a relaxing time off. We'll see you in the new year. Well, everyone, thanks for listening to The Health Advocates, a podcast that breaks down major health news of the week to help you make sense of it all. If you like this episode, please give us a rating and write a review on Apple Podcasts and check us out on YouTube. I'm Zoe Rothblatt. I'm Stephen Newmark. We'll see you next year. Be inspired, supported, and empowered. This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network. Thank you.